My father had been exiled to Siberia for life. But history was changing his sentence. Russia was in its third year of a bloody war against Germany. The Tsar had lost so many men that he needed even his enemies to fight for him. But my father wasn't good enough. Joseph Vistarionovich Jugashvili, age 38, born in Gori in the province of Georgia, exiled to Siberia for revolutionary activities, nevertheless subject to conscription into the Imperial Army. Conscript has the following deformities. Left arm, two inches shorter than right arm, possibly congenital defect. Second and third toes of left foot, webbed and joined. The mark of the devil, rejected. My father robbed banks to raise money for the outlawed Bolshevik party. His favorite alias was Koba. He hunted during the day, and at night he played cards with cutthroats and thieves. Our people were starving. They blamed the Tsar. and he was forced to abdicate. The new government freed all political prisoners and exiled revolutionaries like my father were granted amnesty. The rich and the nobility fled. Koba was going home so was Lenin, the leader of the Bolshevik party, my father's idol. of the old friends were there, like Sergei and Olga Aleluya. Olga! Oh, such a long time. <laughs> and that... A little Nadia. Hey, why aren't you out there with them? Well, I'll see him tomorrow. Nadia was to become my mother. Olga, what did... She's a woman. Not yet. Not yet. yet. I thank you for overthrowing the Tsar! But the Great War still continues! Did you overthrow the Tsar to continue his bloody war? No! Did you overthrow the Tsar so the peasants would remain landless? Did you overthrow the Tsar so the workers and their families would continue to starve? No! The people demand peace! No! The people demand bread! No! The people demand land! No! Forward to the unfinished revolution!
revolution! The proletarian revolution! It took the Bolsheviks six more months to finish the revolution and set up a communist government. No one was allowed to own anything. The Tsar and his family were executed. And a new war broke out. Civil war. Ah, you remember. I remember everything you've told me about him. And I remember how he saved my life when I was drowning in the Black Sea. You were not drowning. You were playing in the water. He waded in, he picked you up and brought you back to us. I was choking water and he swam to save me. You were three years old. I remember. Black Swallow, Nadia Dreko. She's how old now? Seventeen. But dedicated. She could discuss theory with Lenin. That I'd like to hear. <laughs> so, Koba. No. Stalin. Stalin? My new name. Steel. Steel. But for you, friend to friends and comrades like you, I'm always Koba. To Stalin. No. To Lenin. Nadia became one of Lenin's secretaries. A year later, she joined Stalin, who was sent to the Southern Front. Leave you taken from the secretariat. Was that your own idea? What did you say? What? With a civil war on, I said maybe I could be more useful. Useful? Useful? Bringing tea to Stalin? Or watching him? Reporting on him? No, helping him. Oh. So they said Stalin needs help. Stalin needs help from an 18 year old girl? to assist you, to take notes. Who for? Who asked you to watch that? Who? Was it Trotsky or Lenin? Nadia thought Stalin was going to change Russia. She was right. Do you have a notebook? No, here, take this. And a pencil here. Ready? Yes. Right. In his compartment, Stalin told me he would do anything and everything to stabilize the Southern Front. He would take measures, stern measures. But they said that you were only to collect grain, not get involved in military activities. Stalin does not obey orders unless he agrees with them. You always become the leader. Not always, no. Yes. Always, my father says. You want things your way and you get them. What else does he say? You are a hero. 
You organize daring robberies, escapes from prisons. You are a giant among pygmies. I'm a small, humble man, the son of a cobbler and an illiterate washerwoman. The rosebud opens. Blue bells all around. The lark flew higher. The nightingale sings softly. I was 15 when I wrote that. for nationality, chosen by Lenin himself. Klin Voroshilov, this is Nadia Aleluyev, Sergei's daughter. You have your mother's eyes. The Bolshevik aristocrat, huh? <laughs> yeah. Filippo Kavalenko, Tsarist officer. Yes. Do you trust them? Trotsky does, do you? Trotsky's war commissar. And he's the commander of the Red Army. You uh, disagree with Trotsky or not? Not exactly. Good. Then you agree to the need for a vigilance? Yes, absolutely. Resolute vigilance. Here's a list of unreliable officers. I want them to be summoned here immediately. Trotsky should be informed. Trotsky does not understand. We do. All the officers on your list are here, as you requested, Koba. Why? What's the reason? We fought like hell for you, bastards! The barge was not simply. Be very careful. They'd all be lost. Be very, very careful. Officers were being held on a barge, and the barge sank. And who put them on the barge? Irreplaceable professional officers. And who killed them? Stalin. I demand his immediate recall. Stalin is a trusted comrade. Replace him, or I resign. Trotsky or Stalin? Trotsky or Stalin? You don't understand. It must be Trotsky and Stalin. We need you both. Trotsky never forgave my father. They avoided each other, even when living in the Kremlin apartments with the rest of the party leaders. It was there my parents celebrated their wedding. You're still so young. You were younger than me when you ran away with Papa. So I was. But you should have seen your Papa then. He was so handsome. 
an idealistic young revolutionary. Exactly like Coba. Coba's not like your papa. You think he is too old? He's a Georgian. I know Georgian men. But you... I know you don't approve. But I want to be with him. Be happy for me. For us. Nadia. 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 Kuba. He's, he's looking for but you. But she isn't that far away. Unfortunately, we couldn't liberate Volkonsky's crystal. Smash! Do <laughs> life! Kamenev and Zinoviev were intellectuals. My father didn't have their education or their manners. They looked down on him and he knew it. They were on Trotsky's side. Trotsky was the son of a prosperous landowner who had enjoyed all the privileges of wealth and was looked upon by many as Lenin's heir apparent. A uh, French novel? There's a better story in Buharin's apartment. The mountaineer and Nadja Aleluyeva have gotten married. How is it you weren't invited? Anything else? No. demands it. She'll be there, but not early. <laughs>
My mother was very much the new Soviet woman. She continued to work even after she was pregnant. Comrades, are we going to stop making history because no one is here to record it? <laughs> Don't worry. It'll all be rewritten anyway. Comrades, we have a one-point agenda today. The Secretariat. How can we improve its work? What's wrong with its work? Its function is growing faster than its structure. It's the practical problems of party organization. Dues, assignment of personal membership. It's those poor devils on the Secretariat that have to deal with these things. Well, we have it easy on the Politburo. All we have to do is think. Mm -hmm. I think we should assign one of ourselves to the Secretariat as a general secretary. That way, we have direct organizational link. What about you, Comrade Trotsky? Don't saddle me with the job. Saddle a mule. Saddle Stalin. Please, please, please. No personal remarks. Comrade Sinoviev, are you interested? I nominate Stalin. Stalin. Yes, Stalin. Do you accept? Comrade Stalin? If no one will do it, I will do it. Yes. yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> May I change the subject, Comrade Lenin? Please do. The war is behind us. We're in a new period now. The police are supposed to be accountable, but they still do what they like. They still terrorize people. True. I think Comrade Bukharin is right. No brutality should be allowed. Although there is no revolution possible without terror. What are you drawing there? Little drawing. <laughs> Control of all the levers. They don't even know they're doing it, the stupid bastards. Trotsky. Trotsky turns it down. King of the Jews turns it down. I... <laughs> you know what they've given me? A reward for doing the job. A country house. <laughs> you know who it belonged to, the house. Zuvalov. Zuvalov. The bastard we organized a strike against. And Trotsky turns it down. How is she? Is she all right? Man. How would you like to go back to Georgia, Sergo? Knock a few heads together. Who's? Some of our old friends down there, they're running the place as though they own it. They, they need a real kick in the ass. So we'll go. We'll go. Oh, you need a good pair of boots. Feel this. Go ahead, feel it. Nice. I could have been making these if my father had his way. What was I? Nine. He took me down to Tbilisi to make me work in a boot factory. Wanted me to be a cobbler like him. I ran away, came home, nine years old. He beat the shit out of me. Beat the shit out of me. <laughs> but I never made boots for anyone. No. I wear them. And you know the best thing about them, Sergo. Well, with boots, you kick a man in the head. Never find his teeth. Wear boots, Sergo. <laughs> Wear boots.
Vasily. We'll call you Vasily. Koba. What is it? What is the matter? Koba. Koba. It's Lenin. Lenin has had a stroke. May I talk to him? Since when do you ask permission? Vladimir Ilyich. Who authorized you to send this telegram? What? To Sergo or Ginikitze from the general secretary. Is there a copy? You will thoroughly punish the following members of the Georgian Central Committee. Where did you get that? I know they got into an argument, but he slapped the man. A leading comrade. He struck him. The man insulted Sergo. A party member does not strike a party member. It is not permissible. You're in pain? Oh, no, no, it's nothing. It's nothing. You will order Sir Go to apologize. He's Georgian. It's I'm impossible. referring this to the control commission. Who gave you this telegram? Who, Look, who, who told you this? Just order Sir Go to come back. Immediately. Come Immediately. Again. What are they after with these stories? They want to turn you against me. They want to split the party. The doctors have told you to rest, to remain calm. Calm. Now, why do they excite you, these bastards? Why? To kill you, that's the reason. <laughs> I will not allow this. I have one aim, one mission. To get Comrade Lenin back on his feet and able to lead us again. I'll send for the doctors. The job nobody wanted put my father in charge of party security. He surrounded himself with ruthless men, hand-picked for their loyalty to him. Kaganovich was one of them. Natasha is a Lenin switchboard. We will know about everyone who calls. Who set this up? I myself. Who else knows about it? No one. Make sure. Koba. You know, Kober, while Lenin is ill, the country needs a leadership. And Trotsky, of course, is ready to provide one. And also, of course, he would never listen to anyone else's opinion. Yours especially. Not even ours. We have been thinking, until Lenin can return... Restored, healthy, vigorous, and able to deal with all our terrible problems... We could lead. In the spirit of Lenin, of course. We? Comrade Stalin? Kamenev and Zinovia. How many legs does a stool have? Why, three. Oh, because it cannot stand on one or two. Good, 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 good. What are they plotting now? Let them take me for a fool. <laughs>
Where is he? He's not to be disturbed. What are you doing? I'm just re-reading my essays from 1903. They came out again. It is very interesting to see now how stupid we were at that time. Those officials. Yes. I'm reading official reports. The doctors who are responsible to you. They do what you say. Organizationally, yes, but medically, it's you they worry about. They do not want you burdened. Burden? Is it a burden to read newspapers, to even talk politics? Newspaper? Yes, real newspapers, not the kind you had printed for me. One single copy for Lenin. Single copies full of good news. Waste of money just to keep me out of politics. It's to help you recover. No, to keep me out of politics. <laughs> so, I'm not to know what's going on in the country. I'm forbidden to read our own newspapers. Let Comrade Lenin read your fairy tales. What nonsense. What damn nonsense. No, it's to, to speed your recovery. We need your recovery. We need Comrade Lenin's leadership. How can Comrade Lenin lead if he's denied information? Politics. Doctor's orders. Doctor's orders? Mm -hmm. Not Stalin's orders. The situation in Georgia. You are Georgian. You. You. There's nothing to worry about. Do your health. The. The. Did you call Trotsky, you stupid bitch? Did you think that I wouldn't know? He's not to meet with Trotsky or anyone. What are you trying to do? To kill him? Peace <laughs> now! Peace now, step and die. My father understood how much the Russian soul craved a god, now that religion was illegal. It was his idea to embalm Lenin and have him placed on permanent display in Red Square. Comrade Molotov, where is Comrade Trotsky? You were instructed to, 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 to find him and bring him here. What happened? I did reach him. I, uh, I told him the funeral was yesterday. He was too far away to make it yesterday. You lied to him. Why? Hmm? You told me you didn't want to have him here. You were to admit that to no one, true or false. True. Then why are you telling it to me? Real idiot, Molotov. <laughs> you will go far.
leaving us. Comrade Lenin has ordered us to hold high and keep pure. The great calling of the party. Leaving us, Comrade Lenin has enjoined us to keep the unity. Together we vow to keep and honor the commandment, Comrade Lenin. Hmm. We had an argument this morning. About what? Nikolai. Bukharin? But he likes Bukharin. Nikolai found me a job on a new publication, Revolution and Culture. Joseph says the next thing you'll be spending all your time with Bukharin's bunch of bohemians, useless poets, artists. And you said they're not useless. I said they're far from useless. But the revolution needs culture. Exactly. Then I put my arms around him, and then he apologized. And then you made love. Is this whole terrible business of Lenin's death? What's going to happen now? Who's going to lead? Joseph says they're sneaking behind his back, conspiring. Who? Time to get started, Zena. Beautiful flowers. The life is too short. What is it? A telephone call. Yes. About a letter. What letter? A letter that Lenin sent to the Central Committee to be opened after his death. What does it say? You know nothing about it. No, nothing. You worked with Lenin. You were close to him. You heard no one talking about it. No. You were asleep? Oh. I know nothing about it. <laughs> You'll see. They got to him through that bitch Krupskaya. Trotsky. Yes, Trotsky. Kamenev. Zinoviev. The three little yids. Don't say that. <laughs> Mice. But the Georgian cat can make a deal with them, and then... <laughs> Comrade Lenin also wrote, Stalin is too rude, and this fault becomes intolerable in one who holds the office of General Secretary. Therefore, I propose to the comrades to consider a means of removing Stalin from the post and appointing another person more patient, more loyal, more attentive, no. and less no. 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 Only one who can free us of Stalin. Let's have to live a blow. Please, 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 please. For all of us, Lenin's words have special meaning and weight. But in the long period when Comrade Lenin was unable to lead, it fell upon us. Comrades Kamenev, Zinoviev, and Stalin to provide collective leadership. 
Our experience makes me happy to say that Comrade Lenin's apprehensions are not well founded. So I propose to maintain Stalin in his post. This is an outrage. Well, right. no, 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 no. Lenin was Comrade ill. No, yes. Tear it up, Comrade. Lenin was right. We should listen to Lenin. Let the Trotsky speak. Let us agree that Lenin did write those words. He betrayed you. Yes, Comrade. I am rude to those in wreck and split the party. I have never concealed this, and I do not conceal it now. Not well, to be gentle is better, but uh, <laughs> it is not in me to be like that, Krutskaya. I am not free to desert my post. Twice, twice I tried to resign, and twice I was told to remain at my post. I obey the party. It is my obligation. I remain at my post. Trotsky wasted his last chance to stop my father. He underestimated the man he called a mule and a mountaineer. Son. I know. What are you doing here? He's come to Moscow to study. It's, it's better here than Tbilisi. The schools, I mean. Without asking me, you think you can just walk in here? Get out. Go. Out! Go! I've given your son the spare room. You never even told me you had a son. Why? When his mother died, he was two months old. You haven't seen him since. Why? Did you hate her? No. And you loved her? She was a young Georgian woman, uneducated, religious. Oh, so you didn't love her? She was young. I was young. You've never even talked about her. She's dead, Nadia. Oh, a door is shut, a room is sealed. And you never think about her. Dead is dead. And if I die? Don't say that. If I die, will you abandon Vasily? I didn't abandon Yakov. I left him with her sisters. Ha! Who would you leave Vasily with? You, well, you might.
at them conspiring. They play Trotsky against me, me against Trotsky. They think they'll wind up on top. I'll strike first. Alexander the first outlawed the use of torture. <clears throat> the very word torture, he said, is a disgrace to a human race. I'm helping Yakov prepare for his exams. You agree with Alexander? No opinion, brilliant student. Yosef. You agree or not? A little discussion. Let us say that you're an army commander. That will never happen, of course, but let us say it. They bring you a prisoner who has vital information that could save the lives of your, uh, your command. He's stubborn. He, he won't talk. He spits in your face. What do you do, Yakov? I... I don't know. You let your men die? No. Yakov. How do you save them? I... 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 Torture is wrong. My son. And you're trying to... to educate this hopeless idiot. Uh, a copy of Lenin's testament, uh, as they're calling it. Printed in large numbers by a secret press in Leningrad. Stalin is too rude. <laughs> and what role did Zinoviev play in this matter? Zinoviev? Mm. He's partly bossed there. Do you think this could happen without his complicity? I think 
He's on your side. He supported you against Trotsky. A temporary manure. <laughs> Sergo, I think if you go to Leningrad, maybe you could persuade the comrades there to get rid of Zinovia. Find a replacement, a good communist. An attractive personality, but uh, who? who could we get? Kirov? Kirov. You worked with him in the caucus, it? Yes, he really shook things up. A good man. People like him. Reads books, likes music. A well-rounded fellow. It's very good, Sergo. Very good. Why didn't I think of you? Very good. <laughs> Comrade Kirov. Comrade Kiro. Comrade Kiro. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Comrade. Sergo. Comrade. What do you got here? What is it? What? Yourself, huh? A single shot. Hmm. How far? Ten meters. No way, wait. You stood ten meters away from this. I don't believe that. Who could do that? I mean, I, who could do it? Could you do it, Iron Pants? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be iron your pants, would it? <laughs> would it? <laughs> Going to Leningrad to replace Zinoviev. Sergo's going too, and Kaganovich. I'm counting on you. Uh. Ten meters. You shot this from ten meters, Yagoda. Ten meters. Who could believe that? You have to admire a man like that. And watch him. You go to Leningrad and keep an eye on them. Especially, especially Kirov. My parents, my brother Vasily and I, were on our way south to our winter home. We stopped at station after station so that my father could flex the party muscle for local officials who had been summoned there by regional party boss, Lavrenti Beria. Done. The harvests have been good. I could see the fields from the train. <laughs> but the grain is not being delivered. Why is that? 
Is it because the peasants have been told they can, if they wait, obtain better prices and become richer at the expense of everyone else? No, who has told them this? Who? Comrade Stalin, I'm not sure you understand the situation. The state offers low prices, unreasonably low prices. The state asks peasants to work for the benefit of the people in the cities. There's grumbling in my district. Party officials who do not understand our peasants come to the villages threatening. The peasants complain that when they sell their grain, they receive nothing in return. There is nothing for them to buy. I asked what is to be done, and did you give me answers? No. Only complaints. Did you give me a solution? No. So I will give you mine. You will demand the surrender of all stocks of grain at existing prices. Anyone who refuses you will confiscate his grain. You will bring anyone who opposes you to justice under Article 107 of the Criminal Code, which I remind you prescribes severe punishment for any kind of speculation. Those are your instructions. These measures will be applied throughout the Soviet Union. Thank you for your ideas. Eighty percent of the Russian population were farmers who lived and worked remote from party control. For my father, this represented a real danger. Those he could not control might later become enemies. Lavrenti Beria came to our house for the first time that year. I would see him often. He always frightened me. He's a pervert. Beria? <laughs> Sergo knew him in Georgia even before he became party boss. He kidnapped this girl. He raped her. He forced her to marry him. He still rapes women, young girls. He's driving around. He sees someone, he says, bring her in. And then he says, if you don't want something to happen to you or your family, Why doesn't he say something to Joseph? He did. And your husband said, mind your own business. Just like that. I'll talk to him. You're declaring war on the peasants. Forcing them to give up their own land and move onto state collected farms. Already they're shooting their livestock, they're eating their seed grain. If you continue, there will be a famine. Bukharin, you are too soft. There are reports that some peasants have already been shot without trial. Thousands being sent off to labor camps. Why? Do we have to starve the country to feed the city? The Politburo never agreed. I know everyone's position. But Lenin, 
Lenin always said in the party, we discuss and we debate. Don't try to bring Lenin into this, Bukharin. I know Lenin. I'm going back to Moscow. Joseph allows no one to stand up to him. As you know, he fought Trotsky in the exile. He doesn't forgive, he doesn't forget. Zina, he trusts no one, not even Sergo. Why Sergo? His oldest friend? Oh, you're imagining things. He hates his own son, Yakov, humiliates him. No. The only people close to him are his own creatures, this evil pervert, Biria, who is not coming here again. Kaganovich, Molotov, Voroshilov, those. He loves you. Does he? What happened? He wants to get married. I won't have it. Why? Who is she? She's Jewish. So? So? You want him to marry a Jew? Hmm? <laughs> How can you say that? Huh? How can you feel that? Get a doctor. A flesh wound. A doctor and get Vasily out! Yakov survived, but my mother's soul was wounded. What is she doing in Leningrad? I've left him. No. 
an argument. <laughs> He's become suspicious of everyone. Vicious, cruel. Well, he has some rough ways, Koba. He's not Koba. He's Stalin. Of course he's Stalin. He has to be Stalin. Why would Russia be if he wants Stalin? <laughs> is, is he cruel to you? He's a good father. You've said many times he loves the children. Is there somebody else? No. No, of course not. He has burdens. All the problems struggling with selfish elements, wreckers in industry, saboteurs. The country's in crisis. He needs you. That's Sergei. You can't desert your husband. Overtired. You stay here a few days. All right. All right, I'll call him. I'll explain you're tired, worn out, distraught. Oh, you need time, Nadia, to think calmly <laughs> and carefully. If you don't go back, what is going to happen to you? to all of us. You are the wife of Comrade Stalin. You have his children. Oh, don't you see? You are not anymore an ordinary person. He's probably worried about you. Does he know where you are?
Don't dance with your wife. You get in the way. She's a wonderful dancer, you say. You stay. Tell her to show us. Messages from old women. <laughs> the train stopped at a station. On one side, there was a freight train. Cars filled with people being deported. Bodies pitched out onto the rails. One station. How many more are there? A woman ran to me, begging me to tell Stalin, the great Stalin, that people were being starved to death. If only the great Stalin knew, then he would save his people. But here, you celebrate the 50th anniversary of the revolution, and Comrade Stalin feeds his friends while his people starve. Is this what the revolution was for? Oh! Stalin, go! 
for the dying of hunger? No, to a camp. Yes, he would send me to a camp. No, he wouldn't do that. No, you think not? I will talk to him. I will go away somewhere, you're right. I will go with you. No. <laughs> my friend, my dear friend. I have to go away alone. I have to go alone. I'll just go away. You take care of everyone while I'm away. Hmm? I depend on you for this. <sighs> Zina. He told me that Nadia left him as an enemy. That's why he didn't come to the funeral? My friend has buried his heart today. His heart? He buried his heart with a lie. The country is being told she died of appendicitis. 
Yes, he loved her. Yes, he killed her. Yes, he is killing millions in the countryside. And yes, our eyes are shut. Who are we? What are we? What are we now? Why did you betray me? Why? father called the famine a fairy tale and sold to other nations the grain that would have saved his own people. He used the money to industrialize our nation of peasants. The people were pushed day and night to make themselves greater. Russia greater. Stalin greater. All I knew was that my mother had been dead for two years, and we missed her. Wake up! Wake up, sleepyhead! Wake up! Wake up! <laughs> My little housekeeper is bringing me tea this afternoon. Why? Grandma's taking me to Nikolai's wedding. Is that so? Thank you, Vasilievna. <laughs> It's not only us that Hitler is threatening, it's the world. We need a new strategy. We need to unite the world. You're such an idealist, Bukhari. Where's the bride? This is for the bride. Anna Mikhailovna. For years, I've been waiting for you to be old enough to drink this. <laughs> Thank you, Uncle Sergei. And this Nikolai is for you? What? What's that? A horse. I had this creature in the sights of my gun, but he looked straight in my eyes. There is a Renaissance man, he said. You should take me as a present. <laughs> tell the truth, Kirov. You were scared to death. <laughs> you tell the truth. How did you win this girl? It was I who won him, and it wasn't easy. I pretended I was younger than he was. <laughs> so it's I who will make a toast now. To Nikolai, my gentle, open-hearted husband, who believes in the goodness of people, because he is good. Oh. To Nikolai. Nikolai. <laughs> Mm. Another guest. Look at you. Congratulations. You forgot. <laughs> Congratulations. Papa. Did 
Did you think you could marry our Nikolai? And Stalin won't know about it. <laughs> Nikolai, Nikolai, you, <laughs> you've outgalloped me again. We all love your Nikolai. Stalin loves him. Lenin loves him. My dearest, dearest Nadia. Loved him. Is that not so? A beautiful bride. And I wish you both the greatest happiness. Kirov. Make me talk. You sent your brother's deputy to Leningrad. What for? There are people out to get you. No, believe me. Believe me. Unsuspected by you. Trusted by you. You have placed one of your own men in Leningrad? The Central Committee? The Central Committee have, without consulting me, sent a man to NKVD in Leningrad? He will be deputy to your men met. Thank you, Comrade Stalin. I have to get back to Leningrad. Kirov was a popular man. People who had turned against my father and his methods saw Kirov as their best hope for salvation. And my father knew it. Yes? Yes. One moment, please. Yes, you could, huh? Yes, Comrade Stanley. That summer, my father reorganized state security and appointed Yagoda chief. My father had many houses. But the one he lived in most was just outside Moscow. It was a fortress with walls and guards. My father began to spend most of his time behind these walls. Charlie Chaplin, your order. Charlie Chaplin. Every film shown in Russia had to be personally approved by my father. He loved American films the most. Musicals, gangster movies, comedies. Charlie Chaplin was his favorite.
encountered Comrade Kirov last night. A very popular man, isn't he? Yes. In Moscow as well as in Leningrad. Yes. And deservedly so. He's an exceptional leader, always considerate, and always uh, decisive. Yes. Do you think he is aware of it? Aware of what, Comrade Stan? The conspiracy. To make him general secretary instead of me. It's hard to know, Comrade Stalin. It's your business to know. Car, comrade Kirov. At least draw the curtains for safety. For safety, my friend, I have you. Charge of Comrade Kirov's security. Yes, Comrade Stalin. to Comrade Star. You didn't act alone. Now, who helped you? Comrade 
you go to before today, you never saw Comrade Young go to before today. Is that true? It was someone else who approached you. Who knew you hated Comrade Kirov? One of Zinoviev's people, right? But you can't remember who. You need to uh, help me remembering. You've arrested your wife, your mother. Now you want to release, don't you? We'll send you to a new place, new home, new party car. But what am I going to remember? What you told, names, places, everything you've forgotten. You. Get this confession and get a little bit in the edge off. Come on, Grisha. Come with me. Come on, Grisha. First, they tell of Kirov was killed by a personal enemy acting alone. Now they say it was a conspiracy. It probably was a conspiracy. But whose? It's like the burning of the Reichstag. The Nazis do it themselves and blame it on the Reds. What are you saying? Alicia. Alicia. Why won't he come to me? A fox has a mind of its own. Even a red fox. <laughs> It was now a crime to criticize my father or his policies. It became treason. Bukharin is my daughter, and his beautiful young wife, and his fox. <laughs> he calls his fox Grisha. Your name's in Noyev. It's a common name. Yes, of course. But, uh, admit that Bukhari named his fox after you. <laughs> admit it. Possibly. But he never told me. Admit it. Yes. Yes, he named his fox after you. Yes. Bukhari named his fox after me. See, it's easy to tell the truth. So why do you keep lying to Comrade Yogoda and Yezhov? Are they being too kind to you? Kovba, let me tell you from experience we shared. The Tsar's police were gentle uh, compared uh, 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 to... And where is the Tsar now? Kovba, you know us. Huh? We all stood by side, side by side, to overthrow the old regime. We stood side by side to build the new under the inspired leadership of Lenin and How Tsar. can anyone believe that we will conspire with, Com with Trotsky to kill Comrade Kirov? Traitors. This, these, tell her Comrade Zinoviev and Kamenev went along with Trotsky. How did you come by these confessions? How were they obtained? We can tell you, Kobo. Perhaps they don't understand the law. Measures against crime among minors. Children of 12 and over are subject to all measures of criminal punishment, including... Including death. Yes. Including death. Tell Comrade Kamenev about the evidence against his son. Your son has been on lookout near Comrade Stalin's new dacha outside Moscow. 
preferring an attempt to start life. Impossible. He is only 14. Evidence. Fabrications! Evidence. My son would never. How can we... you ask us to say that we scheme with Hitler? Who would believe that? Anyone who hears or reads your confession. And everyone in the world will hear and read and believe. Is that what you want, Yezhov? <laughs> if we agree, you promised that no other old comrades will be executed. Their families will not be harmed. The families, that's important. And our lives too? Of course, all that goes without saying. He promised that he said it. We said it in court. He promised that it was all We were promised our lives if we confessed. But Red Stalin has. Uh... Booked his promise. Grisha, shut up! Be brave! Show them how men who stood with Lenin can die. from the Ukraine, Nikita, builder of our glorious Petro! <laughs> to our Nikita! It's <laughs> raining! <laughs> Show me your hands, Nikita. <laughs> Dirt under the fingernails. Oh! Can you imagine he comes to Stalin's table with dirt under his fingernail? <laughs> Very bad. Been working in the field. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to these gentlemen. Their hands are clean, their nails are manicured. Look. These hands don't do work anymore. These hands are the hands of a gentleman. Put all your hands out. All these gentlemen's hands have forgotten their proletarian origins. <laughs> Nikita. 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 
the execution of Zinoviev and Kamenev. You've said very enough. Ah, because I thought you might not have the stomach for it. <laughs> Wouldn't have been the first execution I have witnessed. No, but at heart you're still a pharmacist. You're good at concocting poisons. You're good at that, making plots, conspiracies. Taking part in Yezhov is replacing you. Take that back to Moscow. You stinking dwarf. <laughs> Your turn will come. Anya, Kamenev and Zinoviev have been shot. What? Not only them. And I've heard a rumor. They implicated me. What? How can that be? These days, anything is possible. Old comrades are falling all over each other to implicate other old comrades and try to save their skins. If Lenin had only lived... Shh! Be careful. All these strange things that have happened to me. He knows that I understand why Kirov was killed. I've seen through his skin. The master conspirator accuses everyone else of conspiracy. Eviction notice. You have one hour. But how can we? My, my, my books, my, my my papers, my wife, our, our child. Those are my instructions. Out. One hour. Hello. Nikolai, how are you? Are you there? It's me, Kova. How are things going? I'm, I'm being evicted. What? The house is full of soldiers. Well, get them the hell out of there. Put them on the floor. I'll tell them to go to hell. For you, Comrade Stalin. Hello. Who gave you those orders? Who? 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 Comrade Yezhov. Comrade Yezhov! Comrade Yezhov is an idiot! Get out of there! Go! Out! 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 You say Stalin has no sense of humor, Yezhov. with your husband. He's expecting you. Oh. You took flowers to Nadia's grave yesterday. Thank you.
for you. Open it. If Nikolai Bukharin is an enemy of the people, then none of us is beyond suspicion. Yes. 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 Do you understand what is happening? No. I thought so. These are dangerous times, Sergo. We are getting stronger. Our enemies cannot allow this. Enemy agents have penetrated everywhere, including high positions, doing all they can to wreck our economy. And they want to follow the murder of Kirov with the murder of Stalin. I need your help, Sergo. You have it? I want you to testify against Bukhari. Bukhari? Yeah, you're close to him. You, Zina, he's Anna Larina. You're not in the string. Bukharin confides in you. Now prove your friendship to Stalin. Prove your loyalty to the state. Hmm? You want me to denounce Bukharin so that you can put him on trial, shoot him. Why go through all that? Make it simple. Our great leader defends the Soviet people. Here. You do it. You shoot Bukharin yourself. Have you got the guts? Put it down. I've seen guns before. They don't frighten me. Put it down. So you won't denounce Bukhari hmm? when your own brother has denounced you. Your brother has confessed that you, Sergo, gave orders as commissar of heavy industry for acts of sabotage and wrecking in the factories. My brother has confessed. You must admit there have been too many incidents, too many. You let my brother be beaten, tortured. Bring him here to Moscow. I want us both to see him. It's too late. Too late. Too late. <laughs> you bastard. You will kill us all. No, Sergo, Sergo, no. You won't shoot Comrade Stalin. If you did, the country would be in chaos. The fascists would invade. They would take the country, and you would go down in history as the man who betrayed Russia to the Germans. And the people, oh, shh, the people would tell you and your wife and your children, everyone who bears the name of Arjeniki, they would tear you to pieces. Eat your heart. Drink your blood. No, no, no. You won't shoot Comrade Stalin. No. I think you will shoot yourself. And we will call it uh, a heart attack brought on by Comrade Arginikis' unceasing work day and night. The hero of the Soviet Union's glorious death. And we will bury you with all honors in the Kremlin wall, close to the tomb of Lenin. No one will ever know what a traitor you were to the party in the country. And your family will be safe and honored. That I promise. You promise? That's all you have left, Sergo. Wait. You were in the seminary. You will recognize the words. 
Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. This is the book of Job. <laughs> by the blast of God they perish, and by the breath of his nostrils are they consumed. kept his word this time. Sergo was given a hero's funeral. His ashes were placed in the Kremlin wall, and Zena was left unharmed. Become my little doorkeeper. Comrade doorkeeper. <laughs> Where did you get that dress? It's too short. Cover your knees. And look at your legs. They're bare. Or a change of dress for the long stockings. You weren't at Sergo's funeral. Why? I'm not, not feeling well. Hmm. I'll send the doctor. No, it's, it's nothing. Don't bother. I don't want to lose you, too. So take care of yourself. Sergo didn't. Heart attack. Yes. They're all taking off like birds from a branch. <laughs> like birds from a branch. <laughs> Oh, forgive me, I'm a simple old woman. No, I don't understand anything. No, how did it suddenly turn out? We have so many enemies. Olga. Uh, these are people we have known all our lives. They're army officers. Uh, loyal party men, your friends, uh, civil war heroes. Now, what is happening? Why are these people dying? Can you tell me? And why is everyone who knew my daughter, everyone who loved Nadia, disappearing, being arrested? Well, who is destroying them? Is it you? Well, for oh, God's sake. Why, why, why not arrest us all? Yes. Why not? Koba. <laughs> be silent for me. Be silent. Why should I be silent? No, let him kill me, too. You drove my daughter to suicide. It was because of you she killed herself. Accuse Bukharin.
accuse Bukhari. You have heard the other defendants testify that you were part of a conspiracy under the direction of the arch traitor Trotsky to overthrow the Soviet regime. To this end, numerous acts of terrorism have been committed, including the murder of Sergei Kirov and even the planning of the assassination What a miserable gang of traitors. I've been listening in my office. What a miserable gang of traitors. Confession is good for their souls. And now Bukhari. <laughs> the climax of our play. that you discussed with him a plot to murder Sergei Kirov. I can't imagine why he said that. There has been no such discussion. I knew nothing of any scheme to murder Kirov. You didn't break him. How could you fail? Corrie says. Corrie says. You had months and months. Let me have him for one night. I'll have him confessing he's the king of England. I have done my duty. I've done everything you asked. Even my own deputy. I myself disclosed. Top officials. Under your command, plotting against Stalin. And you supposedly are not involved? Involved in what? You yourself told me to purge the security apparatus to get new people. Yes, yes, you monster. Are you trying to tell me you deliberately allowed people to be purged, to be killed? What have you done, yes, how can you possibly pay for your terrible crime?
beg you to spare my wife and child. On March 12, 1938, without warning, the German armies marched over the Austrian border. It was really only a full-scale invasion test, and Hitler rode in triumph into Vienna. An ominous development. You think so? I don't know. I, I, you've got to admire Hitler. He knows what he wants. He isn't afraid to go for it. He scares the British and French, but not Comrade Stahl. He's a fascist. Hard to destroy us. He says it over and over. He says a lot of things we all do. I think right now Hitler is looking east, and he's saying that's Stahl, and I can work with him. Done. I gave it the personal touch. Did he say anything? He asked me to give you this. Koba, why did you need my death? This is what uh, Trotsky. How did he ever get through our fingers? But he's in Mexico City. In that house they converted into a fortress. Why don't you get rid of him? Yakov had gone to military school and joined the army, all in a vain attempt to win our father's approval. You have a granddaughter. So you're going to be an artillery officer? Yes. We're calling her. I hope you don't shell her own lines. <laughs> I will do my duty. With all this stretch here in the higher commands, lieutenants like you may be commanding divisions. I will do whatever is required of me. Yakov.
So. What is the situation here? The Germans are attacking everything. Their panzers have penetrated our lines. Their air force dominates. We've lost almost a thousand aircraft. A thousand? How can that be? Most were destroyed on the ground. On the ground? Despite warnings and recommendations, they were left in forward positions. No, counterattack here, 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 here. You don't understand the situation. Our front is crumbling. Our forces are retreating, trying to avoid capture. No capture, no retreat, no surrender. Attack. Beria, Beria. Bring up security troops, should anyone trying to retreat. Shoot our own men? Yes, and we'll shoot you too, you incompetent fool! Kuba! How can you say that? Who killed off all our best generals? 40,000 of our best officers called them enemies of the people, had them shot! Who trusted Hitler? Who said he would not attack us? Voroshilov! No, it was you. It was you! It's been ten days. We're waiting for you. No one can do anything. Koba, they love you. They're calling for you. Come, it's done. Kill you. <laughs> How could they? Without Stalin's orders.
comrades, citizens, brothers and sisters. We are united in a patriotic war against an enemy who is trying to turn our people into slaves of the Germans. We will resist. We will hound and annihilate the enemy. We will show no mercy. Hitler will go the way of Napoleon to defeat, to despair, and to his death. son Yakov has been taken prisoner. I have no son Yakov. Hmm. No. What are we waiting for? I hardly saw my father during the war. When he learned that Yakov was killed trying to escape from a German camp, he never told me. The Germans reached the gates of Moscow itself, and they surrounded Stalingrad too. When we finally pushed them back, 20 million of our people had died. It wasn't until near the end of the war, at the burial of my grandfather, that I saw my father again. It was the first time our family had been together for years. At least Sergei knew. We did everything we could. The best doctor. He died of silence. He didn't die of cancer. Kept his silence, where his friends, his comrades, were sent to prison, were killed. Keep your mouth shut. What have you done, you old bitch? <laughs> Look at my son, the general. Can you stand on your own feet, Vasily? And you, Svetlana, don't use that as an excuse to bring your Jew husband around. What did you teach them? You raised my son to be a drunk. And my daughter, do I have to say it? What could I have expected? Did you teach your own daughter to be loyal to her husband? And you tried to turn him against me. Sergei, <laughs> but you knew me. Sergei knew me. Get drunk, put him in jail for a while, sober him up. My family, what a curse they are.
and of all children. Thank Comrade Stalin for our victory. We all know it was not Stalin who defeated the Germans. Oh, yes, Comrade Stalin, it, it was, was you. you. We do not thank Comrade Stalin for our victory. Our thanks goes to the great Russian people. Your victory is a declaration to the world that the Russian people believe in a better future and stand ready to make whatever sacrifices are necessary to achieve the great construction of socialism. In the winter of 1950, my father sent for me. I had heard that his memory was fading and that he was suspicious of everyone around him. Now he wanted to see me and for the first time his grandson, Yosef. Wait, Yosef. Give mama your hand. Jewish eyes. <laughs> Look, who's that man? Oh, there's someone who makes sure that everything's all right. You don't ask so many questions. Why? Because there are things you don't have to know. Why? Why, why, why? <laughs> A real Jew, huh? <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> I always carry something for the squirrels. See? Now, here, now you feed him. Here, hold it out. You feed him. Feed him. You feed him. See? Hey. Ah, here. Hey. Why that look? Hmm? I want you to free Anna Bukharin. Uh. It's a beautiful red tail, eh? He won't bite. Hmm? Mind your business. You have the slightest idea what you're talking about. She's harmless. You know about harmless. What the hell do you know? I know people are disappearing again. Enemies. Hmm? <coughs> eh. <coughs> Here, talk to your mama. They have no allegiance to the Soviet Union. Enemies.
Grandpa's nice. Man your age, 73, you have a remarkable constitution. In the Caucasus, a man of 70 is still young. He can mount a horse or a woman. <laughs> <laughs> but still, uh, you have had these spells and perhaps angina. And uh, your blood pressure is dangerously. Then you recommend as little work as possible. Fruits, vegetables, injections of vitamins. No injection. I'll write a prescription. No prescriptions. I have my own remedy. Go away. Don't work. Rest. Isn't that what they told Lenin? Thank you, Vinogradov. <laughs> you may go now. Taste it, Levente. I don't like soup. Taste it. <laughs> Look how your father spends his nights with this boring bunch of old men. Stay. I promise from Papa it will get more interesting. Oh, sit down. Sit. You eat. You have some fun. You have some fun. <laughs> fun at the expense of this potato here. Dance the guitar. Dance the guitar. Dance the guitar. I hear you do the go back. Who told me? You do the go back. Don't be shy. Dance. <laughs>
could follow Stalin? Who would follow Stalin? None of you is worthy. So, I'm going to rid myself of all of you. <laughs> the soup you've eaten was poisoned. As you can see, I didn't touch mine. You're joking, Cobb. <laughs> you have to be. Close the door. She didn't understand the situation, what had happened, what I had to do. She listened to certain people, then she turned against me. She became my enemy. And then she betrayed me. She killed herself. <laughs> you killed yourself? Strike blood. Why? It was your fault. You caused it. You're just like her. You listen to my enemies, you just fall over poison. Just a sheep. You let them turn you against me. Hmm. I know who they are. I'll take good care of them. And you think I don't know what you say. I know, Stalin knows. I know what you say, what you do, who you screw. I know everything. Get out of here.
Jimmy drew that. My time has come. around you. But take hold of his hand properly. I'm sorry. Suffer, murdering bastard. You wanted. Why did Beria wait a day before calling the doctor? Have I wondered? You'll try to take power. It'll be as bad as before. You said as bad. I did. You did? And have you thought about it? About what we'll say after Stalin dies? About what? His crimes. What crimes? Millions. Nikita, you're too emotional. You talk too much. Who are we to judge Stalin? For him, we were a weak, backward country. Now look at us. We control half of Europe. The whole of China. We have the atomic bomb. We command respect. Without Stalin, it would have taken 20 years longer. I don't believe that. Without the purges, the arrests, the killings, without Stalin, we could have been a great nation. Our history required Stalin.
Stop it, please. Can't you see the man is dead? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.